Yo, what's up guys? It's Ming the Merciless back with part two of this video series on PokerVIP.com on Global Poker. We had a limped pot where we checked a flop, it checked through, this guy bet 50 cents on the turn, and we had an open and a straight draw and ace high, so we're just going to call the turn. And when he bets here, it's generally going to be a hand that's better than ours. <laughs> you know, generally when they're making these small bets, it's not a bluff. It's just a pair. You know, you're going to get roasted by like a six or something like that. Uh, that being said, uh, we do have a blocker to nine ten, and we're getting a really good price. So we're just going to call and see what he's got this time. But I'd assume he just has like a six or something. Yeah, he's a jack. That's fine. So we go ahead and we three bet here with our king queen combo, and like I said, we're going to use this for our three bet bluff sum. And it looks like my opponent has bet 50 cents <laughs> which uh, honestly i don't know exactly what that's going to be it's probably going to be a hand that that sort of wants to get to showdown we're going to raise it up here for sure to the standard amount that we would be continuation betting and uh, we're going to get it in all all in against big dog and if he's got a better combo uh, then we are we're just screwed you know what i mean looks like he's got pocket sixes and that's not going to help him uh, we got a raise we got a call oops we we timed out over here with a six suited but we were going to squeeze guys we were going to put the squeeze in there we're going to have to fold the jack eight of the suited variety. I hope you guys enjoyed part one of this video series. We're going to have four parts in total. So yeah, uh, unfortunately for us, we didn't get to squeeze our A6. But let's see what we can do with our 5-6 suited here on the button. Good old big dog. Got pocket sixes, will travel. So he 4Xs it. <laughs> You know, I'm not, like, super excited about this for 4x. I don't really want to flat call. Uh, I would flat call 3x, and I don't really want to 3-bet. I mean, 3-betting here would be okay. I'm, I'm just going to elect to fold it. We're just going to play, like, a knit. On this board texture, though, we, we could have certainly interacted. We could decide to bluff raise the flop, or we could have decided to flat call the flop. Uh, with him potting it with a K-bag behind, we probably would have just folded. Because there's a chance that this guy does exactly this and shovels his stack. And when that guy pots it, generally he's going to... What are these guys doing? Global poker, everybody. Global poker. Wow. What in the hell just happened? I couldn't tell you. We've got king-10 offsuit, and we've got ace-4 of hearts. Versus a pot size bet, we're going to fold king-10 offsuit. And versus the button open, we are going to 3-bet with our ace-4 suited. Now, both of these guys seem like regs, but they also don't seem like they're trying to come after us that much. I'd assume that they're going to play back us at, at play back at us rather at some point because you're going to have to make a hand, right? Like Soda Pop just raise folds. There's a lot of overfolding going on in these games, so we should probably be over bluffing, and we should probably be under calling on rivers because there's not a lot of bluffing going on. Like we talked about in the first video, you know, if your opponent bets to uh, you bets, let, let's see. You know, you're going to need, like, a 2 to 1 ratio on the river. He bets pot on the river. You need a 2 to 1 ratio for his bluffs. A lot of the times, they don't have a third of their range as bluffs. You know, you, you got to think if he's got 20 value combos, he's going to need 10 bluffs, you know, for you to, to be able to interact there. It's just not... It's not super likely in a lot of these games from a lot of players. Now, clearly, you've got guys that are just shipping it all in with ace-jack and crazy shit like that. This guy finally wakes up with a 3-bet. We don't have interacting hand here at all, so we'll fold and get out of his way. I like his sizing. I like bigger sizings these days for three bets. I think that like a lot of players are just used to playing against certain sizes and they've kind of memorized their ranges against certain sizes. So when you increase the size, you decrease their ability to uh, to, to call. You you decrease. Sorry guys, let me. I have a, I'm gonna cough. Okay, sorry about that. So you're, when you increase the size, they get a worse price preflop. They can't defend as many combos. And if they start to defend the same combos or the same as if you were just 3-betting, you know, the standard amount that you normally would, then they're just going to be over-defending. So I kind of like a bigger bigger sizing, just kind of monkey with people and, uh, you know, what they're used to. Because once people get used to something in poker, they're good at it. I mean, that's why playing against casuals can sometimes tear the hair out of a, a, a budding professional because the casual player will use sizing or lines or like check raise or check min raise and you constantly hear like what do i do here oh my god now what do i do what do i do about that what about this because they're not used to it because they they don't have enough repetition in that spot there's there's not enough repetition in that exact spot because it doesn't come up that often so using different sizings using you know a couple of different things that the regs are not used to 
could definitely give us an edge back. It looks like we're going to get a walk with our Ace King. That's unfortunate. We'll get the hell out of Dodge with our Ace Deuce Offsuit. I like our Ace Jack of Diamonds combo here. We're going to be raising this one up or three betting it or whichever, however, which way, how, whatever. Shark Bites is under the gun. Let's see if he's going to interact here. Come on, Shark Bites. I know you can do it, buddy. Nope. It's a me, Mario. You want to be three bet, sir? You don't always have to three bet the ace jack offsuit combos. Like, I'm fine folding that as well. The weaker your player is, the more they're calling your three bets, the more you're going to want to three bet these hands for value. And it looks like we're going to be heads up against Oh No, which we have a read on. Flat king, king, preflop, flat flop, c-bet, hit two outer on turn. Oh, this is the dude in the last session I played where I had I had three bet aces on the small blind, and they flatted on the button, and then I bet the low board. It was like a 6-6-2 rainbow board, and the turn was a king, and we obviously triple barrel off, and uh, <laughs> and he has pocket kings, so that was kind of a weird. Didn't, didn't really expect that. I don't know if that was a slow play or some passivity. Either way, pretty lucky, pretty lucky. We're going to go ahead and raise it up here. Four-handed with eight five of clubs in the cutoff, essentially. We get flat called by shark bites, which is generally going to be a lot of middle pocket pairs and Broadway combos. So I'm looking for sort of a lower board texture to interact with. I'm actually just going to take a check back line on this board. We don't have any backdoor draws to note. I mean, obviously we have like a backdoor straight, but it's pretty garbagey. And generally, if he checks here, we can get him to fold to two streets. Like, and we have pretty good blockers, like eight six and five six. So it's a it's a pretty good turn card to just bet twice. And we could even use an overbet on the river if he calls here, because generally he's going to just have ace-x, and he's going to have to make a polarized decision on the river, because we're just representing a six or nothing. And when you check back on a flush draw board, a lot of your opponents are going to take flush draws out of your range, so you reduce your bluffing frequency in the eyes of your opponent, and that is exactly how we would play a six a lot of the time if we had it, in addition to being able to have the occasional ace-x combo. So it ends up being a pretty good spot for us to just bet twice. And since we can have 6x there a lot, and we have blockers to him having a 6, and he's probably never flatting too many raw 6s that aren't like a 6 suited, or maybe if he's a bit looser, 6-7 suited, ends up being a pretty good spot for us to use an overbet sizing on the river. We're going to go ahead and 3-bet our pocket 9s. Probably should have made it a little bigger, but that's okay. Pocket 9s from the small blind. We get called, and this board texture pretty much sucks, so I'm going to check. If you have an opponent who you know plays relatively straightforward, you might be able to get away with c-betting these boards, but in general, you just kind of want to kind of check with hands that are not making any better hand fold and don't want to barrel multiple streets. Like, I never want to barrel with this combo if I ever get called, so we're just going to check down and hope he has pocket fives. Unfortunately for us, they have 8-10 suited and hit a 10 on the river, but that's all right. What can you do? I, I like the way that we play that hand. They're going to have a lot of one pairs in that spot that are going to call, and you'd never really want to double barrel with this combo. Uh, so it's just, yeah, pretty straightforward. He checks back, and I think we're just going to put this in the checking range again. And 4, 5, 6, 7. Now he probably is going to under bluff this river and probably doesn't have too much as far as... What the fuck is this guy doing? From 150 to 11, huh? All right, well, I think we can fold here. You know what I was saying about bigger three bets and the value of them, and I think that guy is taking it to an extreme that I necessarily wouldn't. We're going to raise it up with jack seven. But, um, yeah, when, whenever we get to that river, if my opponents are under bluffing and under thin value betting, then chances are we just need to unprotect our checking range and then bet everything that we would be uh, looking to value better, looking to induce a bluff from other than, like, the weakest ones that are just not going to be ahead of the hands they're calling with. But if you have a hand that's ahead of the hands they're calling with and your opponents are just under bluffing the river and under thin value betting, then that means their river betting range is going to be really, really strong and everything else is going to fall into a category of them more likely making a mistake versus a bet rather than versus a check we get a min raise we're going to fold the ace or the queen six suited rather we have ace king down here so now we're looking for emerge and i mean his flat right there is fine with 10 ace suited i probably would have played the hand about the same as he did i might have decided to bet the turn in the river uh well not necessarily the 10 river but i definitely would have decided to probably to start maybe start bluffing on the turn but it's not always the case. You don't always have to do that. Like, he could have just check, checked down and given up and assumed that I would call him at least once with ace-jack. But the problem is, like, when I check twice there, my king-x combos are generally just bluff catchers. Uh, if I'm checking twice on that type of a board, chances are I'm capped out of bluff catchers, which means he could probably bet the turn and shove the river and probably get a ton of folds. And especially if I'm not balanced to the point where I have hands that are actually calling or I haven't chosen enough combos that are in my check-calling range on the turn to check-call the river, then, you know, he's probably got a pretty good exploitative spot. 
which is why balance is always important. We have a limp and we have a isolation raise. That's gonna get a three bet from it's a me Mario. And you can't mech, you can't mess with Tarzan though. All right, we're gonna go ahead and raise it up. We have a player who we have. Well, I mean, I don't really know if that was a fish or not. This Ono oh 77, probably some sort of reg. Either way, we're gonna raise it up with Ace 10. This guy in the big blind is a shorter stack bro, so we probably want to play pots with him. Same thing with the guy in the button. We don't mind playing Ace 10 offsuit out of position. And with the Ace of Clubs and a King High board, we'll definitely go ahead and bet. Yeah, just your standard old 250 works. And if he calls, we are going to check a lot of turn cards, but not this one. This is a turn card. Uh, especially against an unknown opponent and you don't know that they're going to have a lot of check raises or anything we're just going to go ahead and bomb this turn uh he does have a shorter stack i probably should just overbet shoved here but <laughs> we're probably just going to get shoved like i i <laughs> i screwed up based on his stack size that's my bad uh I, my sizing here should be smaller so i can fold to a shove all right we're we're, we're gonna have to call guys because we're we're getting four to one so we've put ourselves in a spot where i should have just overbet shoved the turn made a smaller bet and folded to a shove or checked back and realized my equity but we're gonna go ahead and hang our sh our head in shame and, and make the call all right guys that was that was that was my own fault i deserve to lose that that was totally my fault i was talking to you guys and i i didn't uh i didn't look at the <laughs> I didn't look at his stack size after I just mentioned his stack size. So don't do that. Pay more attention than I just did. But, um, yeah, so he has top pair, whatever, whatever. Uh, we don't get there. That's okay. Yeah, we could have, we have multiple ways that we could have played that uh, turn. I think not necessarily overbet shoving is going to be the best. I think I, I probably like checking back against his stack size the best on the turn. Uh, more than like a small bet. Because a small bet is going to set us up for betting the river. So it's like small bet barrel river or check back turn or over bet shove. I like over bet shove the least because he gets to play the the easiest to it. Like if he has a king, he just calls. If he has a flush or a set, he just the king or better calls and everything else just gets to fold. So I don't like over bet shove uh, much. I think that checking back or betting small, folding to shove and then triple barreling if he calls, probably going to be the best line. So we, we just kind of screwed ourselves in a sense that we bet. We kind of like played it like a pot limit Omaha hand. We we pot called when in reality we should have done something different. So I think uh, if I had to go back and do that again, I would probably just check back on the turn. I think that's probably going to be the best line for us there. But bet small on the turn, shove the river is certainly better than overbetting or betting like pot and then calling it off. We're going to isolate here with Ace-King, but that was a procedural error. I wasn't paying attention. I deserve to lose that pot. Y'all benefit from seeing the result. And uh, this is a relatively dry board texture. Just going to go ahead and check out of position versus the shorter stack dude. We can definitely check call a bet here relatively easily. And a lot of times guys are just going to stab and give up. Plus we could hit an ace or a king. And if they decide to double barrel, then we'll just get the hell out of their way. This is sort of just the bottom of your uh, check calling range. <laughs> and it looks like he's just shoveling the turn. And honestly, we could still have the best hand here. But we're going to go ahead and, and, and make that fold. We're not going to call the over bet shove. I don't know what the fuck Lobster Mania is doing here. This is kind of an interesting one. I think we're just going to go ahead and flat call here rather than 3-bet and then be forced to get it in against the under-the-gun dude. And we are just going to fold 2-4. And on a 3-4-5 board, we just have nothing going on in this spot. We're just going to get the hell out of dodge. Can't do much with it. Especially on, on that board where people tend to overplay their ace -X combos. Plus, they have a lot of 6-X, 7-X. I mean, they're just... They're not going to have too wide of a betting range in that spot for the most part. We're going to isolate this guy with Queen-10. Any two Broadway cards will get the job done here. Any two playable suited connectors will be good. And we'll just go from there. We already know he's pretty loose, pretty light, willing to check jam turns with just top pair. Usually we'll have him crushed in that spot. Obviously we boned it up this time. We did it for the video. And we're going to raise it up with pocket eights. And on this board texture, we will go ahead and continuation bet. We have backdoor draws, whatnot. Block us to some pairs that call. Uh, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Generally, sets should slow play. So, who knows? But we don't have enough to really continue in this spot. No actual read. So, we'll just go ahead and get out of the way. And in a three-way pot here, I'm fine just checking this back on an ace high board. Somebody's got an ace a pretty decent amount of the time. We have the eight of spades. So in general, we're in, uh, we're, we're in okay shape. If they're going to check twice, then we're certainly going to protect our hand by betting on the turn. And this is mostly just an equity denial, uh, check back the turn, 
or check back the river bet where we're still going to lose to an ace but when it checks twice they're less likely to have an ace <laughs> and then we get check raised by this guy who probably just has some sort of set or two pair so we will fold not really much we can do there especially blocking the spade uh, yeah we're blocking some of his bluffs not not that they like that's a, just a severely under bluffed spot so if they don't have a lot of bluffs we should just fuck off basically we flop a flush draw here he leads for pot i'm assuming this is just going to be asex combo a lot and he's probably just going to shove the turn if we hit a heart so we'll call with our implied odds scenario and fold the turn to the shove and if he checks i'm definitely just going to take a free card because if he has a pair he's probably never folding and we basically have six high so there's not much going on here for us if we bet the turn and get shoved on it really sucks and we're just going to check back realize our equity going to have to fold to a river bet in this spot i'm not super excited about it but a lot of the times when a guy leads out like that especially when you're blocking hearts i mean maybe it's a king like maybe he's leading out with any pair but there's definitely going to be asex combos in their range and we just kind of want to get the hell out of dodge and uh avoid that shit so I'd rather just take the equity and just fold to a river bet than bet the turn and get shoved on or, you know, just even if we bet the turn and don't get a fold, like triple barreling there seems somewhat suspect. And no, we're not going to do anything here with our jack deuce combo. Not going to do anything with our queen nine combo. But yeah, sorry about that, guys. I didn't mean to bone up a hand against that KGB guy. Like, I, I totally just missed his stack size. Uh, better play there would be check back against his stack size or bet small shove river uh, if you have a read. I'd probably just check back, though, at this point and just realize our equity. We have ace deuce offsuit in the small blind. Let's see what we got to get. Let's see. He limps. All right, we'll just limp the ace. You know, wheel ace. Not going to want to isolate with ace deuce offsuit out of position. Well, we might as well see a flop. Uh, we can interact here some if we had the ace of hearts. As it stands, we won't. Let's see what we got. What we got. What we got. And we're just going to fold to this. Raise it up with pocket eights on this table. Table one. Three eight of the suited variety will fold. We get three bet by this reg bro. We are going to flat call with pocket eights. Not going to be a folding combo. We beat ace king. We beat ace jack. They're using a third pot sizing. So this is definitely going to be some PO solver reg. And a lot of the time they're going to have some checking queens here. So we're going to go ahead and call. We have king queen. We have ace queen always. This is definitely a better board for us than them. We're going to put this in our checking range like we would with some queens. We can still be beat by them c-betting with hands like 10s, 9s, and jacks, so we don't really have a reason to value bet here. Although I would suspect that they check those some portion of the time, and they just have ace-king here a lot. And ace-10. So they 3-bet ace-10, and then they bet the flop, and then they check the turn. I mean, it's kind of, kind of a standardly played hand. Like, I don't mind it. Their 3-bet's obviously okay. Their flop c-bet is okay. And the checking and giving up is okay. We're going to fold the ace-9 offsuit. Like, there's a world where they could double barrel there with the ace-10, but it's it's pretty rough. I mean, my calling combos on the flop definitely can include pocket 10s and, and ace-queen, so it's not bad from a blocker perspective. But, you know, I'm going to have queen-jack suited, queen-10 suited, ace-queen, king-queen. The thing about three-bet pots is that on a king-high board, it's a bit better for the three-better because they have ace-king, and the flat caller caps out at king-queen. And on a queen high board, it's a bit better for the flat caller because the flat caller has every fucking queen in the deck. They have queen jack suited, queen 10 suited, sometimes queen 9 or queen 8, depending on scenario, depth of stacks. They have offsuit king queen. They have offsuit ace queen. Sometimes they have offsuit queen jack. So a queen high board, when the guy flat calls, is, is particularly insane for the flat caller. And a king high board is just a bit better for the three better. So that's something that you guys want to kind of make a note of just from a combo perspective because think about it ace king generally getting four bet getting it in kings and aces same thing so king queen is is sort of the the beginning and ace queen or the beginning of the flat calling combos uh for the guy on the button or the cutoff or whichever we're gonna fold this king five of the offsuit variety and it's interesting the way people's ranges interact with certain board textures and figuring out who has the more favorable range on that board and playing accordingly but even then, in small stakes games, 
where your opponents aren't necessarily you know privy and hip and savvy to all that stuff you still want to be a little bit more cautious and a little bit more conservative and if something's like close to the bottom of your range or it's super close and you don't have a read there's nothing wrong with just playing a bit on the tighter side till you gather a little more information about your opponents like those like if i three bet pocket eights and the board is king jack three like i don't have to see about that board just because i have ace king and he doesn't i can just check because he's going to call with a jack he's going to call with all of his kings and then if he does decide to check back uh we can try to get the showdown you know we might be able to check call some turns against some opponents you know we have some flexibility there and, and we're ahead of other pairs that he would call with from deuces to sevens or ahead of ace highs that might check down so i mean it's it's not the end of the world in that spot and if we get called the reason why i don't like pocket pairs in particular is because they're equity locked which means there's literally no flexibility and the success of your stab has to go through the roof because if you don't have a lot of fold equity on a certain board texture then you're going to need hand equity and if your hand equity is two outs that's pretty awful and i think that is something that you can you can say in tournaments as well i think people call three bets too much with pocket pairs in tournaments because the pocket pairs don't play well at all post flop like you flop a polarized distribution of equity either you have a really strong hand and they have two outs or they have a really strong hand and you have two outs so that makes it easy to play but you don't have any flexibility so if i was on like a mid stack mid to shorter stack in a tournament i get faced with one of those small three bets i don't want to just bleed off three you know three to five chips calling pre-flop or three to five blinds and then end up having to just fold all the time post flop and then hope the set gets there and that they have the over pair this time and not the ace king there's a lot of the ways that your opponents will play ace king in small stakes games especially will be that they three bet all their over pairs and their ace kings and then they c bet all of their ace kings and all their over pairs and then the turn they just check all their ace kings and they end up just having over pairs or better when they're betting a second time so their, their range really changes on the turn heavily weighted towards value and even if it's not completely weighted towards value they generally don't have enough bluffs for us to be bluff catching on later streets we have six five lawsuit that's a relatively rough spot in general for us to be bluff catching down when your opponent just doesn't have enough bluffs not enough bluffs to go around for these people it's like kgb has slightly lost more of his stack you have ace king of spades so we're going to raise this up get a flat call from the crazy dude that three bet to 11 before i don't know what the hell that was but you'd assume that a reg isn't going to do that or at least a good thinking reg so uh, chances are that is more of a casual player though full stacked who knows what these facebook people have we get a board texture where we don't have a backdoor flush draw we are in a three-way pot we're out of position to a guy on the button who we already know is a bit on the high variant side i'm just going to go ahead and check here because i don't think that i have a ton of fold equity and if I get called, I'm not really happy on any card other than a jack. And I do have some showdown value against worse ASEX combos. I'm really only making them fold smaller medium pairs. And that's not a bad card either. And generally, if somebody had two pair with an ace here, they would have bet previously. So we are going to go ahead and value bet and probably fold to a raise here. Somebody should have bet king jack on the turn, ace queen on the turn. Ace seven, if we're beat, is, is basically ace seven or ace five from the big blind. Oh no, do you want to... This is one thing that Global Poker does, which uh, I, I'm not super excited about. It says, you've been playing for 61 minutes, and during this time, you've lost $1.27. Do you want to continue to play? Catenio. Uh, yes, I'd love to Catenio to play. <laughs> the reason why I'm not happy with that specifically is because it's going to tell you how much you've won or lost. And as somebody who's trying to not be results-oriented, we're not super happy with that. But that's really not a big deal. It's not a big factor. We're going to call here, getting pretty good price in both of these spots. And we have, you know, Broadway combo in the big blind, multi-way, we're going to call. We flopped the second pair of bluff catcher in both scenarios. Now we have trips in a spot where my opponents are not really going to be bluffing enough. So we're definitely going to bet for value two streets. And over here, getting five to one, we'll just call. Hope to hit a jack or an eight. And this is not a great river just because queen jack gets there i'm gonna put this on my checking range he beats me with a lot of his tens we're chopping uh with nine ten jack ten so our, our kicker doesn't play anymore because we both have trip tens with a ace and a king and he could still have hands that beat me like pocket eights or queen jack we're just gonna have to check call here but i would assume that we're beat quite a bit 
the king is also going to reduce his bluffing combos in a sense that if he has a hand like king jack or king queen then he might just check back the river and take a showdown and as you can see my opponent makes a value bet that's a bit on the too thin side of things i think we can let the jack eight go now but yeah i would say that his value bet there is a bit on the too uh, too thin side just because i'm capable of having some tens might have some check raises you know what i mean he's basically value betting against a king uh, and it's not always going to be that that way and here over here we've been playing for 61 minutes and we're up 20 bucks oh, hell yeah <laughs> Uh, we have an under the gun limper, button guy flats. I'm just going to limp in. Certainly a combo that is worthy of raising, but when you have multiple limpers, it gets a little harder to get it through. And playing out of position, even when you've got a hand that gives you a little bit of board coverage, it's not all that great. And against regs, yeah, sure, but regs aren't limping. You know, these are casual players, these are recreational players, and your strategy changes against them based on their strategy. So if that was a reg that was raising the button, I'd certainly three bet him. But against a group of casuals, I can't always figure with multiple limpers that we're going to have that much fold equity. We're just going to have to piece out. We have 8-9 offsuit on the button, which we will play. Make him say, oh, hasn't 3-bet too much. So we're going to be raising quite a number of buttons here. Not much else going on. Looks like we have an all-in. I mean, habanero, dude. How the hell are you gonna put 18 of 50 in, bro? That's that's a rough spot to be to be bluff catching. Not cool, man. Not cool. Well, to be you know folding basically. <laughs> Not bluff catching, but bluffing. Bluffing is what I mean. Anyway, we've got the a6. We're gonna fold that combo. Pocket eights. So we will call a raise or raise it up ourselves. And Jack-5 offsuit will be a folding combo. If he 3-bets the button, we are going to flat call rather than 4-bet. He hasn't been 3-betting that much. I'd assume he's going to have a lot of Broadway combos. And on this board texture, we beat fuck tons of his combos. We're losing to 9s, 10s, Jacks, Queens, Kings, Aces. There's going to be 36 combos. And if you think about... Uh, ace king and ace queen that's 32 combos already so we actually have the best hand here more than you might think and everything is going to relate to what is my opponent's bluffing frequency on the turn and i would say on this turn it's going to be basically nothing so if he bets this turn he probably just has an over pair and everything else in his range is going to check now on that jack it's not a great spot i'm going to check again i could with the blockers to eight nine and all the sets i could just check raise all in if he bet that river it looks like he just has ace two suited and he played his hand kind of on the standard side i probably just checked the flop i would say that that's a flop texture that you're just not going to get a lot of folds from your opponent's range that flat calls i'm going to have more pairs i'm going to interact more with that board than he is and it's important to think about from a math perspective how many combos your opponent's got of one hand or another so when i look at that board i know that if this guy's c betting ace two suited he has all these ace highs. Even if he's ace, you know, so many suited aces that he's going to be three betting. So many Broadway combos, king queens. If he's three betting all those good Broadway combos, all those suited aces, then you know he probably has like. like let's take a look. You know, let's take a look at Equilab here. Let's bring it up. Not that we can do this perfectly. Let me just get it out of the way of, of stuff or whatever. But like, so so we we take up real quick with Equilab and we take a look at a. At a range and if my opponent is hold on a second guys let me play a couple hands here and we'll just fold these things so if my opponent is going to be playing his standard three bets we'll just say nines plus an ace king then as you can see he has 36 combos of over pairs right that's 36 combos now what kind of combos is he three betting that are not going or just going to be like not strong hands in that spot Let's, let's just give him down to ace 10 offsuit and we'll give him all suited like some of these hands are going to flat so maybe we just even if we're being conservative we just give him king queen and then all the suited ace x combos and that type of stuff as you can see that right there is 112 so like on the flop our hand could be good literally 80 percent of the time <laughs> like you could have a really really high percentage like like almost a four to one ratio three to one ratio for sure but i mean it's just there's going to be a pretty high percentage depending on what he's actually three betting pretty high percentage of those combos that are that are done anyway that'll be it for this video guys hope you've enjoyed this we'll be back for part three in the near future thanks for joining me
This is Ming the Merciless 93 for PokerVIP.com. Check me out on twitch.tv slash Ming the Merciless 93. And don't forget to check out Global Poker. Here, we'll, we'll play Ace Jack and then we'll wrap it up. Or maybe I'll like string you along to the next video. Dun dun dun! Cliffhanger! He folds. <laughs> Alright, later guys.